This morning, we look at Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 38, as we hear the angel Gabriel give Mary the Annunciation of Jesus' birth. And we ask the question, do you believe in Christmas miracles? Grace, mercy, and peace be yours today from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Do you believe in Christmas miracles? That's the question before us today. Someone asked a well-known talk show host, Larry King, whom you probably know, and who is also Jewish, who he would most like to interview from history. And Larry King answered, Jesus Christ. And the question he wants to ask him is this, were you really born of a virgin? Larry King says the answer for him would define all of history. And it does. And we believe it. We Christians believe in the virgin birth. We confess it every Sunday. I believe in Jesus Christ, born of the Virgin Mary. 85% of Christians, George Barna says, believes in the virgin birth. And of non-Christians, 75% of people believe in the virgin birth. The virgin birth is a given in people's minds, Christians not. The birth of Jesus is miraculous. A 10-year-old girl who has become quite knowledgeable about the Bible because of her grandmother's teaching asked her grandmother, which virgin was the mother of Jesus? The Virgin Mary or the King James Virgin? <laughs> now imagine yourself a 10-year-old girl or, or just imagine your childhood. And imagine that you're in that little world that children have. It's kind of like a Christmas box all wrapped up with a bow. But if Jesus isn't there, it's empty, isn't it? You know about Christmas trees and Christmas carols. You know about Christmas presents and getting together with family at Christmas. But that's all you really know. But then someone like your grandmother or someone else in your life who loves and cares for you takes you to church or introduces you to the gospel of Christ. And suddenly the Lord himself unwraps that present and pulls the top off of the box and the light of God's love streams in and you understand what it's all about. It would change your world, wouldn't it? You'd suddenly see a world not so restricted, but a world in which a Christ child, the Christ child was born. A world in which a young girl in the city of Nazareth, a virgin named Mary, had given a miraculous birth and a gift to all the world. It would change who you are from the inside out. And that's exactly what's happening with Mary today. Her little world is being expanded. God is taking the top off the box of her life, unwrapping it in her heart. And she is hearing the glorious promises of God, which she's known from a child because of her time in the synagogue, to suddenly now be fulfilled. The scripture tells us that in the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town of Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. If you're a young girl and you're pledged to be married and you're thinking of what it's going to be to move into the house and the wedding service and what it's going to be like to be a wife and to have a family and all the hopes and dreams that come to young brides and suddenly an angel appears to you and not any angel, the angel Gabriel speaks to you a promise fulfilled. What is your thought? Have you ever thought about standing in the presence of an angel? Suddenly one of God's shining angels appears here to the right of the altar in all of the brilliance and glory of God's holiness. How do we respond to that? Well, hopefully we see, as do the people in the Bible, 
the holiness of God and our inability to measure up. We have this deep sense of our sinfulness and our unworthiness before a pure and righteous God who demands that we be perfect and we never can be. And then sets in the uncertainty. Gabriel's message to Mary is not any different than the message of the angels to anyone to whom they appear. First of all, do not be afraid. God has not sent the angel in judgment, but in grace. I have good news for you. It's an unusual blessing. Mary's troubled by the, the greeting that she hears. Greetings. To you, kindness and graciousness, I wish to you, says the angel, the Lord, the covenant God of Israel, is with you. Unusual. What do we make of that? Mary begins to seriously consider what all of this could mean when the angel speaks to her today. How was it that Mary found favor with God? Some people begin to look at Mary herself and say, well, she was a gentle girl and that she had her heart in the right place, etc., etc. But that is not why God chose her, is it? Why was she highly favored? Because the focus of God's favor always starts with God's loving plans for us. God's love for all of us begin with the desire to fulfill his promise and send to us the Savior, the Deliverer, the one who was promised to come. His favor is focused on this young individual only by God's unmerited choice. He selected this young girl from Nazareth and he chose to give her his favor that she could in turn bear the child that would be the blessing of all the nations. She is truly blessed by God. How does Mary react to the message? She's greatly troubled at the words and wondered in her heart what kind of a greeting this could be. A strange sort of a greeting. Mary has found favor with God. How often have we been confronted with our dear Lord's word as well? The angel brings the word of the Lord. The angel speaks the gospel to Mary in the midst of her fear and her imminent idea that God's judgment is at hand. The words of promise and hope come to her. Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. How many times have you and I turned to that very same word spoken by the angels, given to us through the prophets, and there in God's word he has said to you, I love you. Don't be afraid. Don't be worried. These things that are coming upon you are only temporary. Trust in me. And I will carry you through. And in those words of comfort, we are alive with hope. Because the word of the Lord draws hope into our lives in the, mere, in the middle of a despairing and broken world. When we're confronted with our sins. When we're confronted with our failure to live up to God's plan. When we look at the commandments that God has given us and we see that not a one of those have we kept as perfectly as he would have us keep them. He says to us, do not be afraid. I bring you good tidings of great joy that will be to all of the people. And so he speaks words of hope to Mary. She felt trapped, perhaps, and overwhelmed the world around her. But just like Zechariah's prayers were answered by the angel, so Mary's shown the unmerited favor of God. There's a story about a Banhara tribesman by the name of Isaac 
who laid paralyzed in his hut on his left side. Isaac prayed countless prayers to his Hindu gods for healing and recovery. And as the days went by, not a thing happened. But one of his fellow tribesmen who had a copy of the Gospel of St. Mark in the Lombardi language read that Gospel to him as he lay there. And as he listened to the words of comfort and hope, he became aware that Jesus had healed a paralytic who had been lowered to him from the ceiling of the home where he sat. The man got up took his mat and went home. And in response to the word of hope, Isaac turned to God in prayer and he said, Jesus, just as you've healed the paralytic, please heal me. And this was his hope, and this was his prayer, and this was the infant faith growing in Jesus the child of Bethlehem. And as the days passed and he continued to hear the gospel read, soon he began to notice feeling returning to his limbs. He could begin to move his hand and he could begin to move his arm. And soon in a few weeks he was able to get up off of his bed and go out and the astounded community said, wonderful Isaac, the Hebrew gods have healed you. And Isaac said, no. Not the Hindu gods. And he took the gospel of Mark and he raised it up in the air and he said, the one true God of this book has healed me. And he began the process of sharing that message with others. The God of hope is with us. And the one true God of heaven and earth has come into our lives and given us the hope of the birth of Christ, the miracle of miracles at Christmas. The best moments that we'll find in this Christmas season aren't fighting with people in shopping malls, aren't struggling down the busy highways, they're not found in packages with bows and strings or pretty colored lights, are they? The greatest joy of this season is going to be the word of Christ read to us. Is going to be sitting down in devotion and reading it once again. Is going to be hearing and singing the joy of Christ in the Christmas carols that we sing. And we're already yearning to sing those carols on Christmas Eve because in them is the hope and the comfort that God alone can bring you. The reassurance that you are loved despite your sins. That you are loved and that God in Christ has come to you and made his home with you here. The angel said to Mary, Behold, you will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. You know, there's babies born all over the Metroplex today. And the God of creation is busy, and that marvelous miracle of creation from the moment of conception to the moment they enter the world, and mom and dad give them a name. The angel, as Mary heard the voice, and received the word in humility. The miracle of God, the Holy Spirit, was overshadowing her, and within her was conceived the Christ child. And before he was born, he was a living person and given a living name. His name was Yeshua in Hebrew. Yehoshua, in the full length of the name, meaning Yahweh, the covenant God, is a salvation. And this is why he comes. In Bethlehem, so long ago, in a manger, that you and I might be saved and brought into the household of God. The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever, John writes in the Revelation, for this is David's son, 
born of Mary, Son of God, who comes to give you hope and life. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I'm a virgin? And the angel answered her, for nothing, for nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary said. May your word to me be fulfilled. Thy will be done. It's in our prayers. Jesus will speak these words again and again and again. Thy will be done. The humble and willing servant of the Lord who takes his throne in heaven and leaves it behind and comes enwrapped in flesh. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we have beheld his glory. Do you believe in the miracles of Christmas? We ask at the beginning and we ask again. Do you believe in the miracles of Christmas? Yes, I do believe. Because the beauty of Christmas is not in the presence we receive, but in his presence among us. He is Emmanuel, God with us. And he is with us not only in Bethlehem, but he is with us every day as baptized children of God. As he comes to us again and again in his love and forgiveness and takes away our sins and points us to his cross and reminds us of his love. You are miracle children. You are children born not of a human father or mother in this sense, but of God in your baptism. Live the miracle of Christmas, not only today, but every day. And remember what it means, not only for you and me, but for all the world. Salvation comes from our God. This is the miracle of Christmas. This is Christ's miracle. That he should be wrapped in human flesh and live among us the only begotten of God, full of grace and truth. In Jesus' name, amen. We rise for a blessing. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds through faith. In your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. If you'd like to hear more on this topic or any other, please contact us or join us Sunday mornings for worship at 9 o'clock. Bible class at 10.30.